Today, I'm going to show you how to make your videos look like film, just like this. Digital cameras tend to have a sharper, more perfectly produced images that sometimes lack the feel. This is why the film look is the most sought after by many cinematographers. This film look can be difficult to achieve because most of the high-end cameras are geared towards taking photos. But with the answer plugin, achieving a high-end film look is now easy with some few clicks. So the answer reached out to me a few months ago to try their software and give a honest review. They have absolutely no control whatsoever I say in this review, so I'll give you my honest opinion. For those of you who may not know, the answer is a film emulation plugin for all major video editing programs like Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and photo editing programs like Lightroom and Photoshop. The answer has been through many years of engineering, studying actual film and print stock, and how they interact to create the film-like look on your digital footage. The answer offers so much more than film compression from 63 film stocks and numerous camera profiles to halation, bloom, and grain, just to mention a few. More importantly, the answer provides a comprehensive learning experience that teaches you how film works and how it's been developed to achieve specific results. There is absolutely no one exact way to dial in the features of this plugin. It definitely boils down to your preferred look and how heavy or how light you want the film look. So this tutorial isn't a one-way solution to achieving the film look. The answer has extensive guides that comes when you purchase any of their plugin and they have many tutorials on their official YouTube channel. There are also numerous YouTube videos explaining how to use the answer. For my collaboration with the answer, when you purchase any of their plugins with my code UKGREAT, you get it. 10% discount on your purchase. So, if you're interested in exploring the magical powers of the answer to ease your color grading process, get the plugin with my code UKGREAT at checkout for 10% discount. This is also a way of supporting me with the commission at no extra cost for you. They also have the Deanza Online, a revolutionary photo editor that brings retro film aesthetics to your web browser. With an innovative interface and 48 film presets that runs on your browser, you can now choose any look for your photos, adjust other effects like halation, bloom, and grain. Deanza also have the iPhone app that offers editing on the go, and it has almost all the features available on the full plugin. So now, let me show you a step-by-step -step guide on how I use the answer to achieve a fast color grading process and the film look on the clips you have just seen. So we are here now in DaVinci Resolve and this is the footage. We move on to the color tab. This is what my color grading node structure would normally look like with the answer here at the end and other color grading will be done here. I usually don't do any color grading before applying the answer because you would still need to go back and make adjustments. So I just convert my footage from log into rec 709 gamma 2.4 and make some very light color correction. But for this review, we would just have to use 
three nodes the last node would have the answer on it and the first and the second would be for any other adjustment outside the answer for this review i would go ahead to reset all the nodes and hit option s to create three nodes this node would be labeled the answer here we can do any other color corrections we want to do outside of the answer I will go over to my effects library and I'll type in the answer. It's already here as one of my favorites. You drag and drop the answer on the last node. When you first drop the answer on your clip, you get this washed out look because some of the features are already activated, but you have to deactivate them. The answer follows actual step in film development process as you will see here in this tutorial. When you first drag in the answer, you see that so many of these settings are already open and it makes it look very, very overwhelming. So all you have to do is hold option and click any of the settings and then you get this clean look then you can begin to go in and tweak the settings as you would like so here on input you need to tell the answer what information is embedded in your footage how the clip was shot and what camera profile was used so we go to source and we choose camera and the camera is canon arrow 6 and the format c log 3 cinema gamut as you can see here the footage is immediately converted to rec 709 just like what the camera saw on set when this clip was being shot in the basic correction tools here see here you can change the exposure you can change the temperature and the tints so for the temperature i'll keep it somewhere here 17 because i really want the footage to be warm the tints i'll leave it as minus uh yeah these other ones are not that really important the next thing i do here is to go to the film settings here i can choose all of the different profiles here for this footage i use the kodak vision 350d there are 63 more film stocks to choose from here I choose 50d enable there's also the option to push and pull here i'll leave it somewhere around here 036 Next, I go over to the film developer and I enable it. For the film developer, you boost the color to give it a more bright, colorful, saturated, nice look. For me, I want this look to be very heavy on this clip. The next settings here is the film compression. Film compression actually compresses or flattens the highlight. If you take a look here at the brighter parts of the image, look at the brighter parts of the image here, you can see what it does to the image. For the color density, I want the colors to actually pop. So I'm going to pull this and leave it at 100 here. The next settings here is the expand. After applying your film stock, you might have your blacks crushed or your highlights might be clipping. With the expand tool, you can expand your shadows if they are crushed out, kind of like the lift option in DaVinci. You can also bring up or lower your highlight as the case may be, which helps preserve the white and the black parts of your image and give it a proper contrast. The next settings here is prints. While the applied film stock is like the raw materials, the print stock add the actual finishing touches and the appearance of the film stock in the film development process. For the print, I'll choose the Kodak film print. You can already see what it's doing to the footage. Push the white point to somewhere around seven. Next settings here is color head. The color head is basically like the color correction tool. This is how cold or how warm you want your footage to look in the different parts of the clip. That is the shadows, the mid-tones or the highlights. The next settings here is the film grain. The answer's film grain is probably one of the most impressive and remarkable feature, but you may not really appreciate it due to the YouTube compression. But if we take a closer look and zoom into the footage, you can see that unlike simple grain overlay, the answer actually reconstructs your image out of grain and actively contributes to creating the image rather than just sitting on top of it as a superficial effect. Here you have the different profiles. The lower the number, the bigger and more pronounced the grain impact would be. It is also very impressive to note that you can go into custom and tweak the outcome of the grain with all of these settings. 
reduce the amount to somewhere around here the film resolution i'll leave it somewhere here the shadows around here looks good and for the mid-tones around here film resolution actually helps to organically reduce the noise and to preserve details in the shots the next settings here is halation halation is actually a visual effect that appears when shooting on a film as red orange halo around the contrasting boundaries of overexposed areas as well as also a red glare in the mid-tones usually halation is produced around the bright parts of the image here so if I enable halation here and let's choose the 8 millimeter and if I exaggerate it, you can see around this part what it's doing. I disable and I enable. You can see the red halo effect. But for this shot, I'm going to use the Super 35. I'm going to lower the impact of the effect. It can be quite very hard to see or notice because it's subtle. The more subtle the effect, the better the overall look. The answer's elation is more kind of precise when compared to that of DaVinci Resolve. The next effect here is Bloom. Bloom goes hand in hand with halation. The Bloom effect gives that soft glow around the brightest parts of the image. It gives it that dreamy look. Some promised filters also can achieve this gloomy look, but then it is actually baked into the footage and you cannot edit it in post. So for the Bloom effect, effect i'll choose the, the super 35 and if i exaggerate it if you look at the bright part of the image here you would see what uh, bloom does and if i enable that you see if i disable if i enable you see it gives it that dreamy look but for this footage i'm gonna leave it somewhere around here the next settings here is film damage these are textures dust particles scratches and imperfection that appears on the film as it undergoes the development process and through physical touches for me i'm not going to be using this effect here but if you if we take the super 8 and exaggerate it here you can see some of the you can see some of the dust and scratches here in the image i'm not going to be using this effect the next here is film breath film breath creates inconsistencies with the exposure and colors and also shift the tone of your image i'm not going to be using it the next here is get weave you can see what it's doing to the image it's like it pushes into the image and it makes it bounce along the side around the corners for this footage i'm not going to be using this the next here is overscan motion picture films are scanned with additional areas beyond the image for stabilization and also for cropping which shows the camera gate the frame line the film edges perforations and parts of the adjacent frames for further processing this effect is mostly used to show the viewer that they are watching film or a past event or a memory here in the answer you just have to click to get the effect and it saves you a lot of time going through the internet to find the 8 millimeter overlay but for this footage i'm not going to be using this effect the next effect here is vignettes just like the name implies it adds a subtle darkening to the edges of your footage you can adjust the feather and how dark you want your footage to be enable vignettes you can already see what it's doing to the footage if i disable that enable disable enable you can also adjust the feather here you can also increase or decrease the exposure you can also increase or decrease the aspect ratio the next effect here is monitor i usually switch back and forth this monitor using the first color feature to check sections of the image where there is clipping or overexposure there is also the clipping indicator here the next settings here is output this is just the overall impact that the plugin effect has on your footage you can adjust the strength of the effect with the slider the next settings here is the lot generator here you can take all the effect you've just created and export it as a lot to be applied on another footage 
which can save you a lot of time during color grading. I have saved this film look as a lot and if you want to get this free lot, follow my Instagram at UKGrade and check out the instructions on the giveaway post. The last setting here is options. Now this is how you want your computer to perform based on the quality of the plugin. For normal quality, the plugin is faster on your computer and for high quality, the plugin is on a higher option here. If you look at the image here, it's kind of more saturated in the red. So I'm going to go into one of these nodes which I created here. Using my hue versus saturation, I'm going to reduce the red in the image. The answer is pretty expensive for $449 for a lifetime subscription owing to the fact that DaVinci Resolve has some of the features of the answer and DaVinci costs just around $295 for a lifetime access which is way more cheaper. There are other payments planned for this plugin which is also kind of pricey but then you can decide to choose some specific tools as standalone plugin for a reduced price rather than the full package. Don't forget to use my promo code UKGRADE for a 10% discount when you purchase any of the license. Another issue with using the answer is the lagging on your computer. When heavy effects like film grain, halation, and bloom are turned on, the smooth playback on your computer is limited unless you have a super great computer. The team at the answer made some clarifications. If you are going to be working with heavy effects on your footage, turn off non-critical effects at different stages of your color grading and activate them at the final stage before exporting. You can also use proxy or optimized media. If you're also using node with noise reduction, you could first of all render out the clip with the noise reduction and import it back into your project before applying the dehancer. So is the answer worth it? Absolutely yes. Grading this footage took me just 5 minutes. It is a very powerful and easy tool to get that nostalgic film look that is being sought after by many Hollywood directors. The controls are very intuitive, you don't need too much tutorials to be able to use the Dehancer tools. Dehancer elevates the quality of your film and ups your production value. The software is very convenient, it's high quality and it's very very fast. Overall, the answer is worth the price if you can afford it. Also, you can use my code UKGRADE to get 10% discount on your purchase. Comment below if you would be trying the Dehancer plugin and incorporating it into your color grading workflow. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at UKGRADE and until then, I'll see you in the next video.